Today, I have a special topic for you, my favorite tools of business analysis. I know we talk a lot about the mindset and how to approach working with stakeholders and how to create shared understanding of requirements. These are all very important. However, yes, we also need to use tools. So this is the focus of today. And I'll tell you about seven groups of tools that I use all the time. Even up with all of my experience, I still need those tools. So first of all, and one of my favorites, and the one I want to put as a number one is diagramming tools. Creating diagrams is essential for quality business analysis. You need to create them as communication tools, as analysis tools, and as ways of capturing future requirements. So some of my favorites are MS Visio. I've used it for so many years, probably more than 20. I still love it. I use the Lucid Chart. The Lucid Chart has lots of great templates. I will use anything that my customers, my clients have because a lot of these uh, tools are intuitive and once you know how to use one, you will know others and often even they even have the same hotkeys. For example, my favorite hotkey, Control D, to duplicate the shape works in many tools. And another uh, uh, type of tools is a wireframe in the prototyping tools where you might have specific elements, design elements to create prototypes. So diagramming tools, number one, very important. Number two, spreadsheets. And even though we all love to have fancy databases, you can't get away from using spreadsheets. I use spreadsheets often. It's the first thing I will open up when I start a new meeting with a new group of stakeholders to discuss the project. I use spreadsheets for lists, for logs, for planning, and any time where the big database or the big requirements tool is not set up yet, Excel will do it for me. So business analysis plan will go into a spreadsheet, a starter list of user stories may be captured in a spreadsheet before you have everything set up. RFP documentation, if you're planning to capture the main requirements and the main types of requirements to reach out to potential vendors, spreadsheets often are a tool of choice. Any type of list of catalog like rate log, racy chart, stakeholder list, a glossary, a data dictionary, data mapping, and then even parts of the project plan, because sometimes there is a, a delay before a project manager gets on to create that big project plan in MS project or in another tool. While they're at it, I'm already doing my discovery, my feasibility analysis. I need a place, so I will use a spreadsheet. Sometimes these become temporary repositories and eventually it moves to a more permanent location. But sometimes, you know how we say there is nothing more permanent than temporary and sometimes the spreadsheets end up being used as one of many handy tracking tools until the very end. Next, number three is all of the collaboration and communication tools. Lots of them nowadays on the market and especially after the pandemic, we learned to use them so much better. So starting with anything like collaboration boards, like Mural or Miro, and I love to use them for facilitating workshops, especially if it's a really long workshop and we have different areas and different people can collaborate and we can move around together or separately, works great. And that's for synchronous communication. You can also use collaboration boards for asynchronous that when your team members can come in at any time and look things up and add stuff and put their comments in. Any type of communication, where, whether it's email or messaging or project site, or even adding your comments to someone else's documents. These are all different ways to communicate asynchronously are hugely important because you can't have meeting for everything. You can't resolve everything in meetings. It's not necessarily efficient. People are on different schedules. So being a master of using the right communication tool for the right scenario is important. Collaboration tools are, are also good for communicating, for leaving notes for others, for tagging them. You can use uh, collaboration boards also to start major discussion, for example, with a mind map or with lots of sticky notes. Which brings me to my number four, but really one of my most favorite and simple low tech tools. It's a whiteboard, markers, and sticky notes. 
So if I'm in the room face to face, I want the biggest whiteboard that exists with lots of different colors of markers. I also carry my own markers with me just in case. I love different sticky notes. Uh, you can put sticky notes on the board, connect it with markers, and here is a process flow. And if you want to change things, you just take the sticky note and move it to another place. If you are in a virtual environment, so many of these collaboration tools now have virtual whiteboards. They're a little bit more clunky to use sometimes, but still they have sticky notes, boxes. You don't need anything fancy. Just put three sticky notes in a row, make some notes on them, and you're already helping to facilitate your conversation. So if you are ever a facilitating a meeting, use at the very least a whiteboard, even if you have nothing else, or use a blank PowerPoint slide and use it as your whiteboard. Make notes, put boxes, put bullet lists, help people with visually following what is being discussed. This is hugely important, especially when you're not face to face. So um, again, if I don't have any specific whiteboard tool, I'm just going to open a PowerPoint, open a blank slide, start uh, put a text box or put a couple of rectangles or divide it into two or four areas or use any of those very simple layouts that you may have in PowerPoint and there is your whiteboard ready to go. Okay, number five, data analysis tools. Now this may be interesting, maybe not all of you are using data analysis and query data. I talk a lot about the importance of using data analysis and business analysis, and uh, we have so much data that it's really a shame not to use it. For example, if you want to validate uh, something that your stakeholders said, or if you want to discover exceptional scenarios, or you want just to aggregate and to see how many cases, customers or products or anything else, you have to run some basic statistics. So if you can run SQL queries, that's wonderful. So maybe access to an SQL environment to your data warehouse where you can research and help your own investigation by running your own data queries and then aggregate and summarize the data either in that same interface or in a business intelligence platform or even downloading that to Excel and doing some pivot tables can really, really help with your analysis and anything to do with data, if you have, use it. If you have a ready-to-go business intelligence platform that allows you, for example, to take an existing report and then add things to it, uh, change filtering, or create ad hoc reports, definitely use it. You might be surprised how helpful it is for business analysts, especially during that discovery analysis, root cause analysis phase. Number six, and it is a tool and I qualify it as a tool. Number six is a facilitated workshop. It's an amazing tool. It's a tool that you have to use well and appropriately and at the right place. You don't want to have a workshop for every little thing that can be clarified through asking questions or through a, a bit of a synchronous exchange. But when you need a facilitated workshop with a larger group, it can achieve a lot. It's a tool because you need to know how to use it. So you have to have an agenda. You have to prepare it. You have to know who to invite. What are the roles of different people? You have to lead and facilitate it, capture uh, action items, capture things on parking lot, uh, create some diagrams. So maybe start your facilitated workshop with a few diagram starters. And I'll suggest some examples in the comments. You need to have to have a place to capture requirements and to place to capture issues. You may need a couple of other roles. So facilitated workshops may take a lot of work, but again, it's a great tool, especially for your initial discovery or for solution option discussions with potential vendor or for requirements review, or you can hold a requirements clinic as a workshop. It is a wonderful and useful tool of business analysis. And number seven, and you may have been waiting for this or wondering why didn't I mention it before, my number seven is requirements management tools or uh, software development life cycle tools like Jira, like Azure DevOps. So these are the tools, these are powerful tools where you can track all of your requirements and epics and themes and uh, then the design features and you can trace everything from 
the APIC to the requirement to, or user story to acceptance criteria to test cases and to even pieces of code and branches of code. So the whole development of the system can be tracked in these tools. So they're very powerful. They usually require administration. They require expertise. Sometimes we only use them for user story tracking and may not use them for the whole software development lifecycle. So these can be very, very fundamental, especially for a large project for digital transformation program where there is a lot to track. The reason I put them the last is often in a real project, they're not ready right away. So you have to start before you even have your JIRA set up or before you have projects set up in Azure DevOps. Sometimes it doesn't depend on you as an analyst or sometimes you're doing feasibility analysis before project is even approved. So all of the other tools I mentioned are helpful and useful. And eventually you might transition some of your temporary nodes or list in Excel into say Azure DevOps, or you may link your user stories in Jira to requirements you created in another place. Most likely you will use a combination. For example, you track your user stories in the backlog, but you want those to be rich requirements. So you may add hyperlinks to, um, a location, for example, somewhere on SharePoint, where you keep the latest version of every diagram so that you can link to the same diagram from multiple user stores. Now I went through my number seven items. You probably want to ask why I didn't mention word processing or presentation tools. I do use them. Uh, they are needed. We can't get away from Word or PowerPoint or the equivalents in other um, systems. However, um, they have to be temporary and you have to think about tools more broadly as um, things you can use to collaborate, to create shared understanding. For example, if you do capture your requirements in Microsoft Word as a business requirement document, that's fine if that's your choice. But then think about how you A, supplement it by diagrams that you created in other tools. B, maybe you are supplemented by a glossary of terms, which is easier to manage in Excel than in a spreadsheet because that's where you can filter things and search easier. C, you may want to uh, use uh, comments or other ways to collaborate on document reviews and how to do it more efficiently. Where do you want to keep your actions? Are they part of your document or do you want to keep them outside? And so on. So yes, uh, processing tool, word processing tools and PowerPoint slides or other presentation software has its uh, role as, as a supplementary tool. But again, it's, it's just so generic for analysis. Think about everything else I mentioned, creating diagrams, creating catalogs, analyzing data, facilitating communications through either workshops, which are synchronous or collaboration boards and emails, messages, etc., which are asynchronous. And then eventually you bring it all into that um, requirements management software or SDLC management software if you have luxury of having it and if you're using it properly. So hopefully that was helpful for your business analysis tools and tools used by many experienced BAs. I'll add more information in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.